Assalamu alaikum. The budget 21, uh, 21 is in as far as 2021 today and some of the major sectors the government has uh, talked about, agriculture being one of them, taxation. We'll be talking about uh, in detail on what are some of the main sectors and some of the main changes the government seems focused on in this budget. It's generally uh, a budget inclusive, out, uh, sustainable growth. There seems to be a focus on growth. There seems to be a focus on activity so that uh, more activity can be generated. We'll be talking more on taxation and other areas. I have uh, with me today um, Saddam Hussein, who's an economist. Thank you for joining us today. Abdul Jalil, who's a public policy uh, analyst. Thank you Thank for you being with us today. We'll, we'll also be joined by um, Ariba Shahid, who's an e e econ economic journalist. Thank you for being with us. And Dr. Afshan Kazi, who's an economist. Um, G, let's start off with you, Saddam Saab. How do you see some of the changes? I particularly, I think some of the areas we can focus on, but let's talk about taxation. Let's start off with that. How do you see the changes the government is aiming towards? Of course, it's also a three-pronged uh, budget, and there's also uh, talk about the past, what the government inherited, what are some of the measures they aim to take, and also uh, what are the incentives the government is focused on and they want to give. How do you see it? Ed, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I guess uh, given the limited fiscal space of the government in the backdrop of the pandemic and the IMF program, mm. uh, the government seemed to have managed well in mm. the budget. Uh, I guess the main objective is to shift from the stabilization to the growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they are aiming for the growth as it's been seen that the, the, the development budget has been increased around 36%. Mm. Uh, so it will generate the growth. Mm. And you know, th uh, over 30 to 40 industries are linked with the construction. There will be the mega projects. It will generate employment mm. uh, and generate income and alleviate the, the, the poverty. Mm. Uh, but we are missing a long term st strategy there. Again, it's a hardware investment. We need software investment. So far, so the budget is good. But we uh, should also have a, a long term plan in mm. the mind so that. Mm we don't uh, get b back to scale one after a year. Okay. Uh, and re uh, regarding the taxation, uh, you mm. have said very well that uh, they have no imposed no new new taxes. So this, mm. this is a relief for a common man. Okay. Uh, uh, and they have also c c cut down a few other types of holding taxes. Let me come back to you. Jeejin, we were yeah. talking about taxation. Mm -hmm. uh, in your experience, <coughs> Madam, uh, when we see this budget, we can, mm. I mean, to a larger extent, we can s we can find out that it is one of the best po financial possibility as mm. far as the resource availability is concerned. Okay. Because of the, as you know, in the previous year, we have been experiencing a lot of growth. Uh, uh, we have been experiencing a huge inflation with slackening growth mm. as well as uh, mm. uh, low investment as mm. well and low uh, mm, uh, export as well. Mm. But now uh, the government have taken some, I would say, a very in a ki ki kind of a very drastic step in order to revamp the mega uh, infrastructure, the mega um, framework of economy as mm. well. For example, number one, let's come, we should talk about the taxation policy. Mm. Taxation policy, in fact, the business class, investor class has got a lot of complaint about it. Number mm. one, with respect to the high taxation rate, mm. number one, especially mm. the corporate sector have a lot of uh, complaint against it. Number two, mm. this at the, in the light, then there were certain arbitrary you know, the, uh, uh, there was an arbitrary uh, provision of the mm. tax laws, mm. which really hinder the uh, which which really hindered the payment of the uh, the tax by the honest taxpayer. Mm. The the tax uh, the investor and the business community wanted to tone them down and mm. want to bring them to want to moderate them in order to win the in order to establish a kind of a partnership relationship between the government and. And, and the business class, and, and that, that is what the government has done. It, right. the government. For mm -hmm. example, the, uh, the first step they have taken is the restoration of the self-assessment scheme. This is very good. This is a great step which they have taken. They mm -hmm. said that whatever you declare, mm -hmm. and we believe that you will declare according to true particular of your income, mm. and we will accept it as such. Mm. But in any case, the government reserved the right of picking up some of the cases mm. out of uh, out of digital balloting system. Mm digital value, 5% mm. or a 4%, they would be mm. set apart from total audit as well, mm. number two. And number three, the government have decided to cut down, uh, to provide a relief to the low income group and the small, the poor class of the society by taking lot of the tax burden from their, you know, <coughs> from their, um, from their um, economic um, liabilities. For mm. example, the government have decided, especially the mm. agriculture class, that mm. was, 
a step which was much needed. For example, mm. the government said that all facility created for the storage, for the storage preservation of the perishable food and etc. etc. Mm. It would be the, any investment made thereon in it would be exempted from the tax. Number one mm -hmm. and number two, they would be provided direct connection. Let's say the. Are there any other tax exemptions? The uh, yes, tax exemption. Then they they have taken another very good step in mm. order to restore the confidence of the taxpayer in the government uh, mm. in the government machinery mm. that was the the business class have got uh, th as we were talking about they have mm. a lot of complaint against the arbitrary exercise right. of the discretion by the taxpayer mm. the government mm. have decided that now the cases set apart for total audit shall be examined by the third party i mean uh, the third party includes chartered accountant and legal expert who mm. will examine their income particular expenditure particular and give their recommendation and that recommendation will be referred to the income tax authority right, let me purpose. let me come back to you jaleel sir i'm going to go to ariba ji uh, ariba we've been talking about the measures taken by the government to infuse confidence as far as tax is concerned that's been a huge issue and this government has been very focused on tax from the very beginning there's been wanting to be uh, you know expand the tax base with a view to that how do you see the changes that happened in the budget today so the biggest challenge in, uh, in today's budget is where the government announces that it wants to bring in uh, all retailers to the tax net this is a big challenge because Ariba, i think uh, uh, a lot of G, now i can hear you yeah so what i'm saying is the biggest challenge in today's budget is when the government says that it wants to bring in retailers into the tax net so a lot of these retailers are undocumented or untaxed. So this is going to be a big challenge for this budget. But in addition to this, the government has done a lot of other uh, things in, in terms of taxes. So um, there's one thing which is very interesting is that custom duties are removed on textiles and other industry raw materials. So, you know, this is something which the government is trying to do to boost exports. So as far as taxes are concerned, in one way, they are trying to ramp up more taxes by bringing more people into the net. But on the other side, they're also trying to promote industries, especially during uh, pandemic conditions, by reducing taxes and encouraging, uh, you know, greater production. Right. Um, in terms of uh, agriculture, how do you see the changes at this time? Because, you know, that's another area the, the, the uh, budget clearly focuses on. And that has also been a cause of concern for this government. They've, there's also been, from the very beginning, they've been wanting to uh, increase our agriculture output. Of course, you know, being the economy that we are, uh, what are the changes that you think will help us as far as this budget is concerned uh, with regard to agriculture? So as far as agriculture is concerned, uh, for the past one week, we've seen the government try to come up with various policies for agriculture. Over, over the past few days as well. Uh, considering last year, when the budget was announced last year, we were going through locust infections. So mm -hmm. this year things are uh, you know, considerably better because one, we're not being attacked by pests. Two, mm -hmm. uh, our, um, the, the local shortages in the agriculture industry are somewhat mitigated and are, to, are, are moving towards improvement. So keeping that in mind, this budget as well is agriculture friendly. And like Shokat Reen has been saying over the past one week, okay, we are going to focus on agriculture and we can see that the government has and hopefully there will be an improvement. And of course, there's also, uh, you know, a lot of talk about, you know, there is uh, the government is quite serious and we've seen the Neelam Jalem project, the Mohammed Dam, all of those, uh, you know, are yeah. also the primary focus uh, at this time. We've seen that in the budget also. So the government is very yeah. serious about tackling the water shortage also. And that is, co of course, something that will uh, infuse a lot of, uh, you know, help ag agriculture also. Um, so uh, 91 billion has been announced for water security itself, which is right. a big number. Uh, lots of uh, dam projects, for instance, the Dasu hydro hydropower project is for 57 billion. Then you've got the Dami Pasha Dam, the Mohammed Dam, and then Neelam Jalam Hydro Project. So the government has allocated a significant amount just for water security, which is essential for a country like Pakistan that is facing shortages. Right. I'm going uh, to, before I go to Jaleed Sab, G. Jaleed Sab. I, I, I would just like to add, uh, <coughs> mm. under the, you know, the, the, the government have taken, I would say the, the government should have taken long ago, but this step taken by the government with respect to the imposition of the sale tax on the vehicle will mm. be welcomed by at least middle class and the low middle class. Sale tax has been removed mm. and the <coughs> excise duty has been removed. 
up to 800 cc because the prices of the vehicle have gone up. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the, uh, the f finance minister have also said that we will rationalize the payment of the general sale tax. Um, meanwhile, the sale tax uh, basis would be widened now, right. and mechanical system will be introduced at least in the uh, in the wholesale and retailer shops for monitoring the turnover. Right. I'm going to go to Dr. Afsan Kazi. G, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. G, what are some we're talking? What are some of the positives we're talking about taxation? We've talked about agriculture. What are some of the positives you feel uh, within the budget this time? Okay, when we talk about the current budget, um, the most uh, glaring improvement that we see is the is the growth target that has been set, and that is a rise of 4.8% uh, or, or a GDP target of 4.8%, which, which seems to be the highest since 2018. Since 2018. So this gives us a hope that now finally, finally the government has the capacity to manage uh, and to go beyond the consolidation phase since we are you know, uh, also trying to meet the conditionalities of IMF loans. So given that we are trying to uh, deal with the conditionalities, thus we are moved, going to, trying to move beyond the consolidation phase and now we are we're trying to focus on a budget that is growth centric. So having a growth centric budget, uh, while the, the while the problems have not been completely addressed, is a big challenge in mm -hmm. itself. So the government is uh, doing a lot and it is putting in a lot of effort uh, to, to to ensure that we do move towards a growth centric budget. So the most important thing in this budget is that the uh, public sector development uh, or, or the development outlay of the entire budget is very encouraging, mm -hmm. which lies at around 1.9 trillion dollars. Uh, sorry, 1.9 trillion rupees, uh, which is a raise of 44 percent from the last budget, from the last fiscal mm -hmm. year, which was around, uh, the, the last year's last fiscal year's uh, development layout was at around 1. 3 trillion. Having said that, just because the government has allocated a greater uh, proportion of budget for public sector development, that gives hope for a, for a number of sectors to get improved, just as uh, you know, my um, uh, fellow uh, panelists have been discussing, that agriculture sector is going to uh, benefit. Uh, a greater proportion has been allocated to address the issue of water shortage. Most importantly, when we talk about uh, agricultural side or the way we talk about agricultural subsidies that the government aims to continue mm -hmm. to the farmers, this is something that will impact us, our economy at the grassroots level. So for, for, for have, having, having uh, you know, having uh, ha having promising uh, growth targets is, is important, but addressing those growth targets through grassroots uh, level steps is, is, is more significant. So given that agricultural subsidies are very much a part of it, it would somehow address the issue of food security and it would help check food prices as well. However, uh, what needs to be ensured is that not only um, given that the development layout of the budget is greater than the last fiscal year, what needs to be ensured is a, is, is a shift in the investment priorities. The unless and until the investment priorities are not put to right direction, uh, you know, much of the hope that lies within the same budget, within this budget, uh, it, it might not be fulfilled. So we have to look at it critically. Yes, the budget is very promising, but at the same time, the investment priorities have to be uh, shaped well. For instance, uh, th there has been an issue like, um, uh, th despite the dollar fluctuating in the international market, uh, the inflation has, is, is not being addressed uh, at, 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 the, at the local level. So, uh, so in order to address the issue of inflation, it is somehow re re related to the competitiveness of your export markets. And and and, and a very glaring observation regarding Pakistan's economy is that in, in, the, in the past 70, more than 70 years journey of Pakistan, the tax uh, or, or, or the trade specialization has not actually improved mm -hmm. much. So yes, the budget does um, have, have, have much promising aspects, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we need to look at it critically and we need to go sector-wise in order to ensure, for instance, the budget allocation for education sector has been improved, which is a promising thing. But at the same time, we need to ensure that within the educational sector is the aspect of technical vocational uh, learning being focused on because that is where we would be able to fill in the gap regarding skilled labor and there are multiple issues so so if you if you go if you go issue by issue if you go by issue specific questions then right. I will, even I will with come the back to you i'm going to go to sadam hussain ji sadam sir uh, you she's she's right you know she talks about going sector by sector let's go by you know let's do that let's go sector by sector how do you see uh, we talked about agriculture how do you see let's talk about industries what are some of the incentives you think this government is uh, planning on giving in this budget uh, this time round we have already uh, i guess uh, done from the minister's speech they are incentivizing the industry mm. uh, i would uh, 
tell you that uh, we have uh, conducted a, a study at Pied or the, the textile uh, units. Hmm. Uh, the government offered them regionally competitive energy prices, uh, the, the, the tariff to them. Hmm. And we uh, visited Fasabad and Lahore. Hmm. So what happens is that when they were given the competitive energy t t tariff, they were competing in the regional countries like India, hmm. Bangladesh and Vietnam. Hmm. So exports also grew. In addition to that, um, a few of the industries were also uh, adding a new textile, uh, the, the, the units they were adding mm. to the new textile units, and they were um, uh, hiring more employees. So they were on the, the path of expansion. Mm. But there's one thing that they mentioned that there's uncertainty in the, in the, the policy, mm. that we are expanding, we are uh, adding more units, but we don't know how, how long this uh, the policy will stay. Mm. So I guess the government has re, uh, uh, reiterated that the policy is going to stay, we are we'll going to incentivize the industry for the export, uh, led growth in the country. And the fact so that the, the, the confidence-infusing measures as exactly. far as taxation is concerned are likely to help exactly. in the industry. So the, the confidence anyway. and you know the, the satisfaction and the te textile, mm. you know, because I visited on the ground, mm. so they were expanding, they were hiring more employees and they were uh, futuristic in their approach that you know we will expand this much and we will export th th mm. this much. So they had a whole plan. So I guess this budget has reinforced the, the confidence in the industry and the uh, particularly the manufacturing and textile units and Jee, agriculture. Jee, do you agree? Yeah. You think that it's uh, going to be as far yeah. as the well industry sector is concerned? You know, when uh, we see, uh, as we see, there are four or five fundamental of the mm. macro economy. For example, the taxation policy, mm. investment number one, investment policy, taxation policy, monetary policy, mm. then the social sector economy, the, the social sector, uh, social sector economy, and uh, out. Now, if you s if you try to see the government has, for I will say to a larger extent, have tried to reconcile all these four pillar or five pillar of the economy, mm. for, you know, right? And there was a lot of distortion in the previous mega economic framework as well. For mm. example, the government were willing to increase the investment, but the investor was not ready to make investment because the return rate on the loan was very heavy because of the high interest rate. Now the government had rationalized it. So this is going to number two is that the government, for example, in taxation measure, the government have given some voice to the business class, to the investor class. They said, okay, just file your return, whatever you say, we okay. will believe. We will not, mm. uh, we will not give you any trouble of visiting income tax department, mm. right? Declare your particular and whatever you have declared, we will accept it, mm. right? Only four or five percent. Mm. So their sense of participation has been given to the. Mm. The, uh, to the business class uh, in mm. uh, you know in matter of the payment of the uh, the mm. tax liability right. in the government machinery mm. this will of course raise the level of confidence of mm. the investor in that mm. and number 3 you will see the agriculture class mm. agriculture class is i would say it have always been on the receiving end mm. right especially mm. lower middle class the mm. uh, the lower the lower cl agricultural class are the farmer class and the middle class. Mm. Number, they are totally depending upon the mm. uh, uh, upon this uh, the middle, middle the, the middleman for the middleman for the for uh, for the sale of. But their the role goods. of the middleman seems now to have been reduced. Uh, yes, the government have taken some step to reduce mm. their uh, role, the middleman mm. role in it, mm. by providing them direct access to the bigger market. This is very important. Mm. Number one and number two, the, you know, about forty to fifty percent of our parish goods, our our the fruit, mm. our uh, especially the fruit and vegetables, they are destroyed because of the non-availability of the requisite facility. For but the there first are time, incentives government for that also. In this yes, budget. they are provided. Mm. Yeah. Number two, mm. number three is mm. that the I I you know the modern age is the mm. age of a digital economy. This mm. is called knowledge-based economy. Right. And if you have denied uh, this significant role. Mm to digital uh, to the digital technology you won't be able to make progress mm. that was a good step on the part of the prime minister that he has in fact mm. uh, he has refused to levy any tax on the internet mm. and he said that it would be rationalized similarly the import of the computers um, w uh, the computer parts and mm. the computers it will also be it's uh, it, it it too would be rationalized number three the government has put crackdown uh, they say the government now is fully determined to put crackdown on the smuggle goods any businessman or any uh, any businessman selling mm. smuggle goods will be mm. severely punished under mm. the under the law as well under the custom law as mm. well as under the criminal law mm. of the country this should have been done long ago because this is uh, really the smuggle goods are really let's talk about the growth. services sector yeah. service sector uh, uh, 
what we were talking about, service sector totally depends upon, number one, on your di digital technology. Mm -hmm. This is very important. We have to increase the role of digital technology in the software development. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to facilitate mm -hmm. software development, I would say that the government should provide them extra measure to extra major and extra facilities mm. to the to the, to the investors as well okay. you know very well i um, mean on the other day i happened to have a discussion with the software board and he said that there is a part uh, there is a business group in pakistan who is uh, who is really providing lot of essential services in field of software to ibm and mm. they are earning huge remittances and he said that the government should come forward and set up more IT park in this mm. country. Mm. But the, uh, the finance but minister have declared yes, that the more IT park right. will be. Uh, Ariba, uh, what we, we've been talking about the services sector. Uh, in the services sector, of course, the government has also given incentives. Uh, how do you see the effect of that? So the service sector is really important uh, over the past one year. Um, because the, uh, the growth in the service sector as per the economic survey has been greater mm. than the other sectors. So uh, more emphasis towards the sector and the potential that it has is, is very important because we have a very large population and we haven't, um, you know, reached the level of industrialization that one can. So the service sector right. proves to be an important sector for the government mm. of Pakistan. Uh, keeping that in mind, uh, there are some things that the government has done. Uh, which is helping the daily wages, which obviously are not directly the service sector, but it does have an impact. So the minimum wage has been mm. hiked by 20% to 20,000 per month, which is a good enough increase. Um, mm. And and measures like this are what's going to help, uh, you know, the daily wages, the, the normal, uh, the lower uh, struggling right. uh, income classes mm. um but keeping that in mind our it uh, exports have increased drastically during the year uh this is mm. one sector that the economy is really focusing towards um mm. other than that there are other features that the government is working on in order to improve services so for services to actually exist you need uh, proper banking channels and uh, smooth transactions so for that purpose there is no withholding tax on banking transactions margin financing air travel debit card and credit card transactions so these are a few small measures that we may not think are important but overall in the long scheme of things they they really help the service sector right okay uh, gee, uh dr Aftan, uh let's move on let's talk about uh, the it sector we've been we discussed we touched upon it a little bit jaleel sahab is saying of course you know there are incentives in the it sector also and it's one of those areas uh, you know that has been looked has been looked at for a long time there is there is aim to strengthen it more uh, do you think it'll make a difference th the measures at this time that the government is taking of course strengthening the it sector is uh, is very significant for any government in today's world not only because you know it, uh, the, the, this sector needs to be focused on for having you know uh, an export uh, orientation but because indeed for indigenous needs you know having a strong it sector is very significant just as Dalil Saab has, has mentioned that we live in a world of knowledge economies so the knowledge economies function unless we are good enough at you know IT infrastructure and uh, the, the the current budget it, it does talk about facilitating the IT structure and you know mm -hmm. for the strengthening it for for its export orientation but the mm -hmm. but the point that needs to be focused on that in order to beef up the IT sector they, it has a direct link with your education sector and with the way your education for policy is formulated because only if there is a culture of innovation and if there is there's a culture of creating think, creative thinking in your in your education system only then you know your IT sector would be getting the, the kind of human capital that it requires IT sector is a sector that, that does not de depend on you know huge numbers of uh, labor but it does require you know human capital in terms of you know well you know well equipped laborers or well equipped uh, uh, workforce that does know how to handle the uh, IT infra infrastructure and in fact for a, for, 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 for a country like, like Pakistan that is largely you know our export market is oriented by uh, to, to, uh, is driven by the agriculture sector having mm -hmm. IT sector as, as a strong alternative to what we can offer to the world is very much significant for us because just when we talk about the competitiveness of Pakistan's you know economy in the world and more more importantly when we talk about the currency fluctuation and the exchange rates and the and and, and, the, and, the, and the weak currency that you know Pakistani rupee is so that can only be improved if we would you know uh, if, if we would follow this idea of comp of dynamic comparative advantage like we should not only focus on what we are doing we have been doing agriculture for so many years but mm. if we even within agriculture 
that we have not been able to innovate, and then we don't we have not been able to, to, to switch sectors like most of the developing countries in in, in Asia ha, have done in the past, and this is you know how they managed to become making so, so there is a in, in addition to the budget or, or, the, or the direction that the budget gives, it is promising, but at the same time we need to keep in mind that we do face a fiscal deficit and we still have to you know meet the IMF requirements. So therefore, we have to go the innovative way. We have to innovate and we have to see what fits best for us. We have to look for localized situations simply uh, rather than simply focusing on what we have doing we have been doing for ages. And and this is the only way that we would you know, be able to focus on, on, on the growth of, you know, uh, uh, GDP growth in real terms rather than only nominal terms. So, yes, you know, uh, there are several let changes me, that let are me, GDP. Let is, me is come back to you. But I'm going to uh, go to Saddam Ji. Yeah, I'll Saddam. just add Ji. this building on that the technology and hmm. uh, we quite recently have uh, released a report reform hmm. agenda and hmm. that there is a chapter internet for all. So in the pandemic, there was a silver, a silver lining in the cloud that we have seen that women-led businesses have used the online space for the business, and there were there uh, there emerged an idea of e, e, e hospitals and educational uh, activities were online mm. and the transaction. And there is a term uh, there is an economist I forgot his name. He, he called it a sludge, the, uh, the administrative and structural frictions. Mm -hmm. For example, I have to pay a tax, I have to go to the FBR, and I have to visit few offices and few people, and I have to spend a few hours. Mm -hmm. So if there's an internet for all, good internet, and uh, IT technology is good, and the, the structure, the programming is good, so I can just pay my tax for easy pass or a click of a, uh, a click of a mouse. So it can be done in a five minutes or 15 minutes. Uh, so that six hours, if you take it aggregate, that the thousands of hours people spend on these things, the structured Those frictions, that, like times, times that can be that invested in the right. productive activity. So that mm. can boost economy as a whole. But yeah. that there is an aim to do that, right? Didn't yeah, yeah, this is what, the, yeah. Gee. Because he refused to have uh, the tax on the internet and on the phone, there's also limited so there tax on the phone. Yeah. Right, G uh, Jerusalem. I, I would just like to say, Maro, we should also try to see the international or a global perspective, mm. the post epidemic, uh, you know, the world which is going to throw up an economic challenge to us. Mm. Because these are our projections which yeah. has been made, <coughs> which has been made according to the given situation. Mm through which we are passing. Now, the interna at the international level, what G7 meeting is going on, mm. they have almost decided to impose international taxation mm. on the tech products, okay. right? And they said that the 50% of the tech product, I mean, the, that te tech product which is going to be produced by the high-tech uh, uh, corporate sector, for example, Google and et cetera, et cetera, like that. Because they said that so far, they have enjoyed complete immunity from the payment of the requisite taxes despite the fact that they are using the resources of the various country, and the 15% of it would be spent on the welfare of the poor people, countries now like that. But much has, much can be said about it, that uh, whether this resource will be used to manipulate the economy of the developing country, and how much share we will get out of it, right? And secondly, if, um, secondly, the <coughs> developed country so far has not shared the advanced knowledge with us uh, without any price. They are charging mm -hmm. a very heavy price while mm -hmm. they are sharing this advanced knowledge of high tech with us. Right. And uh, this is a sector in which the developing country needs to have a carry out a special discussion. Do you think, with that, the the, do you think that the budget overall keeps that in mind, the global picture? Uh, yeah, this is very, uh, yes, and um, this is my personal experience. Mm. More or less, we try to ignore it. Okay. The reason being that it is done, mm. this budget recommendations are made on those desks which are in concern about their policy as well. Mm. The global framework. Mm has to be ha, has to be thought about or it has to be sketched out through your political vision and mm. it's up to the politician that how do they take it mm. and how will they try to offset those repercussions likely to arise from mm. it number two is the environment you know mm. environment mm. degradation environment policy deeply affect your economic policy and mm. social policy fast deterioration of economy especially as you are experienced now, the fast rising of global warming. Mm. And Pakistan is one of those countries which mm. is worst hit now. Mm. is causing drought-like condition, mm. the lower production of, uh, lower agriculture production, and the dislocation and migration of the population from, uh, f uh, from s uh, villages to the city in search of a job. And uh, the lower middle, uh, the lower farmer and the poor farmer, they are leaving their job. Mm. This is a big, I mean, this is mm. the outcome of this uh, global warming mm. and this de deterioration and destruction of the environment. Mm. We need to bring 
about a global uh, uh, green revolution in the country. Prime Minister have taken but steps. But there has and, yeah, and they have I'm they have declared green drive that, and all yes that. that we will provide now incentive mm -hmm. to those people who will grow street, especially mm -hmm. the younger generation, mm -hmm. the student who will grow mm -hmm. street mm -hmm. by name. Number two, this is and number three is <coughs> that the the global market now is coming up with the especially with the new quality standards assurance. Okay. World Economic Forum have already said that this the developed country need to bring down their their standards, their quality standard at least to accommodate the product of the developed uh, developing country. So far it could not happen. The government of Pakistan need to secure it because although we are on the receiving end, right? But our main product of export is textile, number mm. one. Mm. Number two is the agricultural, especially the agriculture output, which includes perishable fruit, right. vegetable, and, of course, and, cotton, cetera, and, cotton, and and the produce cotton, of cotton. And, and cetera. In this aspect, especially the, the vegetable, fruit, uh, and um, the, this is an area in which the government has to have yet take uh, many steps in order to ensure qualitative protection and its absorption in international market. I mean, this is just out of my private knowledge, I am telling you, the export of the mango, the Pakistani mango is considered one of the best. Right. But a lot of complaints, I mean, one of my friends have sent a complaint that the Pakistani mango received in America has earned a lot of complaint against it. It was a low quality mango and it was, in fact, it has been found rotten in many, in many ways. So this, uh, you know, when you export something, it also earns image, national image for you as well. So you have to take every step hmm. that the things exported bears uh, the legitimate aspiration of the importers in the domestic market. Right. I'm going the to go to Ariba Ji. Ariba, let's talk, uh, let's move on. Let's talk a little about the tourism sector. There, there are incentives that the government uh, has given even in the tourism sector. Do you think that that will significantly improve because, you know, after post-COVID scenario, we need to look at the global picture, we need to look at our own country, we need to look at our own problems, and vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, of course, the development of tourism in Pakistan. So this government has focused a lot on tourism right from the beginning, mm -hmm. and it just had an unlucky um, you know, duration during COVID, but even despite that COVID, uh, mm -hmm. we, we've seen that during COVID, uh, mm -hmm. we, the northern areas were still able to attract tourism. Um, Keeping that in mind, uh, the withholding tax for flights has been revoked, uh, re reduced, and in addition to that, uh, it's also interesting to see that very um, that various measures are being taken. So, for instance, PIA has now started an air safari, which will take people to the highest uh, peak in Pakistan and and show them that. And you know, you may even see the people on the top of the mountain there. Uh, so that's also an interesting fact that's happening. So there is a lot that's going on in the tourism space, and the government's going to promote that as much as possible. But mm -hmm. you cannot have tourism until you have uh, greater disposable incomes. So if we talk about local tourism, that is. So without that, uh, tourism sector will always be a little dampened with its growth. Mm -hmm. So uh, based on this budget, whatever, whatever one can see is that it's a consumption-led budget. So this means that the government is trying to boost consumption all throughout and that basically means that they're going to try to control inflation and uh, bring up disposable income, which obviously will lead to more inflation when consumption-led inflation happens. But it's, it's very interesting to see uh, and compare this budget with last year when we were working on mitigation and now we're working on promotion of consumption. So it's, it's actually interesting. Right. I'm going to be Dr. Afsa, your, your take on tourism and the tourism sector and the incentives there. Um, my take would be, I, I would second what Ayuba has said, that yes, tourism is a, very, is, is a fundamental sector that we need, need to focus on, especially when it comes to raising domestic consumption. And uh, only through domestic consumption, of course, inflation could be addressed. So, but, but the issue with tourism is that tourism, again, is a sector that we don't, not only need to you know, get the commercial benefit out of, but at the same time, it's a resource that needs to be preserved. So when we talk about greater, greater funds being allocated to tourism, so for instance, I am myself a lover of, of, you know, of, of traveling, and I, I like to travel and I like to see a different parts of Pakistan. So, so as I travel, you know, I get really disappointed because even where you know, government puts into place 
uh, amenities for increasing tourism at places that have not been traversed so far, it fails to put into place uh, the management mechanisms that would ensure that the, that the resources are preserved. And many of the, you know, and significantly when you talk about importance, when you talk about tourism, it's only one, you know, region that has, you know, uh, been getting greater attention, and that is the northern areas. If we really want to tap our potential for tourism domestically in order to boost our domestic economy, which actually many of the countries across the world have been doing. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the, the revenue that China uh, generates from its local tourism. That's commendable. So if we really want to, to beef up the revenue that we generate from local tourism, it's not only the northern areas that we need to focus on, but we also have a lagging sector where and uh, where we need to focus our attention, and that is the maritime tourism. Maritime tourism right. is an industry that has 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 been badly lagging in Pakistan, mm. yeah, like the concept of ferries and the concept of you know tourism through cruise ships. That has been lagging. We have a coast that is blessed. We have a coast that the world knows of. We have a coast that you know the world and and this China specifically specifically wants to gain potential from. So it's high time that when we when we are focusing on developing Gawadar, we should also look at it from the tourism perspective. And first of all, rather than uh, rather than you know uh, focusing on the external dimension of Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being with us, uh, Ariba Shahid and Dr. Afsa Kazi. Thank you for joining us. Ji, uh, Jale uh, before I go to Jaleel Saab, Ji, um, Saddam Saab, your comments, final comments on your overall look. Of course, it's just been in. Uh, it will take some time to go into the minute details. But what is your overall take on uh, the budget? I guess given the, the, given the tight situation, uh, as I said earlier about the pandemic and the IMF program, it was a well-managed budget, a balanced budget, and there was an intention and sincerity toward, to grow towards pro-growth budget and incentivizing the industry and mm -hmm. uh, having, uh, you know, uh, the, having a, a soft corner for a, a pro common poor man. Budget? I would say that because there's a social safety net, a SaaS program, and no new t new taxes and. Mm increase in the salaries so i guess uh, th this is uh, the maximum the, the, the government could have done in this situation right fair uh, enough g jaleed sir yes you have said that can you call it is a pro growth yes it is a pro growth uh, budget as and well and the government have taken number for example government have taken good step by providing incentive to the cottage industry as well. Cot it is the cottage industry which is the basis of all industrial revolution, mm -hmm. right? Firstly and secondly, this is an area which will absorb our surplus manpower in our rural area, in our urban area. As you know, the, our, <coughs> our population is growing with great speed as well. And Pakistan is one of those countries where the uh, where the population below the age of 30 constitutes 67 percent of the population so it's a very productive manpower but right. what i mean to say is mm -hmm. here i would like to 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 make recommend to recommend to the government of pakistan that we have got this is one of the youngest country in the world mm -hmm. and we should adopt a very careful well deliberated and well sponsored financially a human resource policy our human resource is very it can become very productive and play a key role in the development provided we are able to train them into a high skill into a high skilled manpower so far the government have not taken number of steps here in this respect mm -hmm. and number two is that the, the technology management policy all over the world now you know the technology management policy has acquired in its own significant identity marks as well which we need to adopt for example Finland is one country which has created a, a ministry of future future means that what are the future high tech likely to develop and we should lay their foundation today so the government right. of pakistan yes. has to sponsor center of excellence and the knowledge created by the center of excellence uh, should be shared by the industrial sector commercial sector our business sector right. and in this respect they should create co knowledge cottage this is very important uh, uh, holland has created germany has created in pakistan the problem is that our industrial structure our manufacturing sector is not fully benefiting from the latest technology from the latest practice right. of the management G so G G G unfortunately we will have to uh, end there uh, thank you for being with us uh, jaleel saab thank you for joining us uh, saddam hussein saab thank you for being with us sure. uh, as far as the budget is concerned overall it's it's a pro growth budget it's a pro development budget centered on growth uh, lots of incentives have been given 
to uh, in the agriculture sector, sector in taxation, in tourism, across the board, we are seeing measures uh, and the government trying to infuse uh, growth within the country. Uh, we'll be talking more about the budget. The budget transmission will continue after the headlines. Please stay with us.